God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. being used by God as the apostle, the teacher, and the prophet over this ministry, the Word of God through Jesus Christ. I'd like to ask you to join with us today for a very informative and powerful show. Please bring pens, uh, some paper to take notes, and your Bible so you can follow along with me in Scripture. And this might be one of the shows where I have one of my friends with me that are also in the Gospel. This ministry networks with a lot of ministers, and the Lord uses this ministry to even give ministers a chance that no one else would give a chance to. So today is going to be a very powerful show. I don't know what God is going to do today, but we are going to find out. The ministry's website is right here, so that way you can go on the website and you can check it out and you can feel yourself around and, and, and look, look on the different features of the ministry's website. Don't forget to sign the guest book and just enjoy yourself. We love you. This ministry loves you so much. And the ministry's phone number is 475 300 3850 24 hours you can call for prayer bible questions or whatever but in the meantime let's go back here and get into the word and see what the holy ghost would have us to study you see all these books behind me come on let's go let's go into the library And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to be on the TV today so I can come into your homes today and share the gospel with you today because we know that time is running out. And we need all those that don't know the Lord to get to know the Lord because God is soon to come back. Today's message is, is time for Jesus Christ because time is running out. I'm going to give out some scriptures from St. John's, according to St. John's. St. John, the 15th chapter, from the 16th to the, to the 19th verse. St. John, third chapter. 15 to the 18th verse St. John's 18 chapter 36 verse 
the gospel according to John. The author is John. John proposed in the fourth gospel was, as he plainly declared, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Therefore he present Christ as the Son of God, who was sent from God and always spoke the messages God gave him. I'm going to go to the throne of grace right now. I'm asking you that are home to bow your heads with me in prayer. I'm asking you to gather your loved ones around the TV set if they're sick or they, they, they need deliverance to just stick your hand out in front of your TV set so I can pray and as I pray and have God to touch you. Father God, right now, O oh God, in Jesus' name, I ask right now, God, for teaching and preaching power. I know, God, that I'm nothing without you, O oh God, and I ask that you do come in, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Father God, I'm asking you to touch everyone out in TV land, O oh God. I'm asking you to touch them right now, O oh God, from their head down to their toes. I'm asking you to let the blood run warm in their veins and in their bodies because you love them. Father God, I'm asking right now that prayers go out for those that who have lost someone in the past few days or this month, O oh God. I'm asking that you comfort them in Jesus' name. Father God, I ask right now to take authority over every spirit, O oh God, that's not like you in Jesus' name. And Satan, I command you that you loose your hold on the people of God. I pray for those that have pains that aches in their body in Jesus' name, O oh God. I'm asking that you resurrect some strength in that body right now, O oh God, and move by your spirit. Father God, I'm asking you to those that cannot hear, O oh God, let them hear in Jesus' name. Those that cannot see, God, I'm asking you to open up their eyes so that they can see the day, O oh God. And those that cannot walk, God, I ask that you let them walk in Jesus' name because all power is in your hands, O oh God. There's nothing too hard for you and there's nothing that you cannot do. Father God, I'm asking that you touch all the backsliders today, O oh God, that's watching this program, O oh God, and call them back home because you're soon to come. I'm asking those, God, that don't know you to touch their minds and their hearts because you're standing, you're knocking at the door right now, O oh God. Father, I'm just asking you to do a new thing in their life, O oh God, because time is at hand and you don't want nobody to be lost, O oh God. Father God, I'm asking that you move by your power and your spirit on today's show, God, to let them know that you are real and that you love them, that you care, and that you're moving in behind in behalf of them, oh God. See, God, they don't know that you are behind the scene, God. You, you're working for them, oh God. Everything's going to be all right. I'm asking you, God, that every ear that hear, that every eye that see, God, bless in Jesus' name. Father God, I ask that you touch the Coleman family today, oh God, and touch them, God, and bless them real good, oh God, on today. Father God, I'm asking that you bless all the producers that are here today that are here to help me, God, to get out your message, oh God, in Jesus' name. I ask God that you anoint me, God, and tell me what you would want me to say, oh God. I remove self and you come in, oh God, because this is not for me, God, this is for you. I'm not here for no form or no fashion, but just to preach your gospel and your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Gospel of John, according to John. John is the author. John's purpose in the fourth gospel was, as he plainly declared, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Therefore he pre present Christ as the Son of God, who was sent from God and always spoke the messages that God gave him. John alone recorded the great I Am. Declaration of Christ, John also writes the ministry of Christ involving his death and his resurrection for he came to die for sinners. John, one of the twelve, alone with his brother James and with Peter, he belonged to the inner circle of discipling, a group that was near Christ on such occasions as the transfer, the transfer, the transfer creation and the agony in Gethsemane. John also a witness of John the Baptist to the Son of God and the sacrifice the Son of God. God accepts those who obey his law, but not those who simply hear it. By reading the scriptures you learn how God wants you to behave 
and you discover what is right. God gave Jesus to die for our sins and he raised him to life so that we would be made acceptable to God. Christ died for us at a time when we were helpless and sinful. No one is really willing to die for an honest person, though someone might be willing to die for a true good person. But God showed how much he loved us by having Christ die for us even though we were sinners. See, Adam sinned, and that sin brought death into the world. Now everyone has sin, and so everyone must die. See, that one sin brought death to many others. Everyone was going to be punished because Adam sinned. But because of the good thing that Christ had done, God accepted us and gave us the gift of life. Adam disobeyed God and caused many others to be sinners. But Jesus obeyed him and will make many people accepted to God. This means that we will have eternal life as surely as we die with Christ. We believe we will also live with him. We know that death no longer has any power over Christ. He died and was raised to live never to, to life, never again to die. When Christ died, he died for sin once and for all. But now he is a, alive and he lives only for God in the same way you must think of yourself as death to the power of sin. But Christ Jesus has given life to you and love for your God. Don't let sin rule your life. If you belong to, to Christ Jesus, you won't be punished. The Holy Spirit will give you life that comes from Christ Jesus and will set you free. to the book of Matthews, 25th chapter, 31 verse. It says when, the, says, when the Son of Man comes, as King, all the angels with him, he will sit on his royal throne, and the people of all the nation will be gathered before him. Then he will divide them into two groups, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. He will put the righteous people at his right, and the others at his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, Come ye that are blessed by my father, come and pose the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your home, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me, the righteous will then answer him, When, Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see a stranger and welcome you in our home, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you did this for one of these less important of these followers of mine, you did it for me. Then he, will, then he will say to those on his left, Away from me, you that are under God's curse. Away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, but you would not feed me. Thirsty, but you would not give me a drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me in your home. Naked, but you would not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you would not take care of me. Then they will answer him, when, Lord, did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger for naked or sick or in prison? And we, and we would not help you. The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you refuse to help one of these less important ones, you refuse to help me. These, those then will be sent off to eternal, eternal punishment, but the righteous will go to eternal life. Thank God. Then Jesus, then the angel said to me, These words are true and can't be trusted. And the Lord God who gave his spirit to the prophets, he sent his angels to show his servants what must happen very soon. Listen, said Jesus, I am coming soon. 
Happy are those who obey the pathetic word in this book. I, John, have heard and seen all these things, and when I finished hearing and seeing them, I fell down at the feet of the angel who had showed me these things, and I was about to worship him, but he said to me, Don't do it. I am a servant together with you and with your brother, the prophets, and, and of all those who obey the words in this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not keep the prophetic word of this book a secret, because the time is near when all this will happen. Whoever is evil must go on doing evil, and whoever is filthy must go on being filthy. Whoever is good must go on doing good. Whoever is holy must go on being holy. Listen, says Jesus, I am coming soon. I will bring my reward with me. I give to each one according to what he has done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Happy are those who wash their robes clean, and so have the, the right to eat the fruit from the tree of life, and to go through the gates into the city. But outside the city are the perverse and those who practice magic. The immorals and the murders, those who worship idols, and those who are liars, both in word and deed. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to announce these things to you. And the church. I am descended from the family of David. I am the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride says, Come. Everyone who heard this must also say, Come. Come, whoever is thirsty, accept the water of life as a gift, whoever wants it. I thank God for those two read the two meanings of these words. Heaven is yours and my eternal home. When you was born, your body was born, but your body also had a living soul. Your soul, the real you, the part of you that remembers and thinks and feels, will live forever and ever. Years from now, you will still be living. Your body will be in the grave, but you will be living. Where are you going to be? The musician of a rock group said, I do what I always wanted to do. I'm, I'm not more happy or content with my life than I was 10 years ago. I got everything I wanted in my life, except I don't really have a life now. I don't have any real friends, any relationship that means anything to me. I turned myself into the music creation performance machine on a television program where a lot of winners were interviewed. One woman had won $26 million. The winner said, I was known for three years. The interview replied, but you must have been happy. She answered, yes and no. I got a divorce two years after we won. The interview then asked her, can money buy happiness? She replied, of course not. When you have money, you go out and buy what you want. Then later, the emptiness that you had before all come back only worse. Young people are continuing to try sex at an even more tender age. They have seen it on the screens. They have looked at magazines and stores. They say sex must be the answer. And every young children are trying it. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? What are people today looking for? The same as one young man in the Bible says. A certain ruler asked Jesus saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thy good? None is good, save one that is God. Thy knowest the, the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, Sell all that thou hast, and, and distribute unto the poor, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that, he was very sorrowful. He said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? It hasn't changed. There's a restless among people, especially among youth today. 
There's a feeling of emptiness and dependency and a sense of guilt. There's a strong desire for an, an, an algae that will give meaning to our existence. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? The Bible teaches that God is from everlasting to everlasting. He never had a beginning. He doesn't have an end. He created us. He created the universe with all the galaxy and all the stars and all the planet. God made it all. You say, I don't understand that. Well, I don't understand it neither. I don't even pretend to understand it. I accept by faith that is what's happening. Without a proper concept of God, we can't understand life at all. It doesn't make sense to live a few years and then die. Another generation is born and live a few years and then die. Each generation goes through the same experience, war and fighting and killing, all sorts of things. It's all the same, generation after generation, because down deep inside the human race has a disease, and the disease is called sin. We have all sinned, we have all deceased by sin, and, and that the disease is fatal. Perhaps these are some of the same things that drove this young ruler in the Bible to seek advice and concern from Jesus Christ. The young man came to the right person, Jesus, like you and I have to come to Jesus. Jesus was, in all points, tempted like as we are. You ask, do you believe that Jesus was tempted towards sex? Yes. Do you believe that he was tempted to steal and to lie? Yes. The Bible said that Jesus was tempted in all points. He understand all temptation. He understand the pulling and the elements and the attraction. He understand the problem that we face. He understands the difficulty and the temptation. He entered into our joy and sorrows and, and failures and challenges. He died on the cross for you, for me. Why did he have to die on the cross? God has said that if we break his moral law, we will suffer and die. And the hearts of the moral law is the Ten Commandments. Have you ever broke the Ten Commandments? I have. The scripture said that if we break the commandments at one point, we all have broken them all. Jesus explained the Ten Commandments. He said that if we have lust in our heart, we have already committed adultery. We are all guilty. We are all under the sentence of death. And there's only one way out. The young man came the right way. He ran. He was, he was in a hurry to get to Jesus. He came with urgency. Remember now, thy creator in the day of thy youth. The Bible said Joseph was a young man. He fleed from the temptation of the Portis' port wife and was thrown into jail. But later he became the prime minister of Egypt. Moses was a young man when he turned down a place of power in Egypt so that he could identify with the people of God. David was a young man when he killed a bear and a lion. Young people need to know that God has his eyes on them and that he loved them. If, you're, if you forget anything else, remember one thing, God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son to take the penalty of your sin. He fell down. The young man came with the right attitude. He fell down before Jesus in an attitude of humanity. And that's the way that we need to come. A part of repentance is saying, Lord, I have sinned. I'm sorry for my sin. I am willing to turn from my sin. I am willing to change my way of life and follow you. That was what Jesus demand of his followers. Are you ready to do that? Do you want Jesus into your heart? Do you want to know when, when you will die? You will go to heaven. Do you want Jesus to come in and help you solve your problems and meet your challenges? To get all of that, you need to say to him, I'm sorry I sinned. And by faith, you must receive him into your heart. You do it by faith. The young man asked the right question. He asked, what shall I do? In one sense, there was nothing that he could do. There is nothing that we can do. The Bible says, by grace, ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourself, not of yourself. 
It is the gift of God, grace, mean, unmerited favors. In other words, we can't work our way into heaven. We can't buy our way into heaven. All the good things that we do in our entire life will get us one minute in heaven. It has already been done for us by Jesus Christ on the cross and by his resurrection. The young man received the right answer. Jesus count the cross. Jesus taught that responsibility is not enough. Money is not enough. Religion is not enough. Many of you have been baptized. You may have been confirmed, but deep down inside, you know that Jesus does not really live in your heart, or at least you have a doubt about it. Scriptures say that you can know that you can be sure. You can be absolutely sure that Jesus lives in your heart, not because of anything that you have done, but because of Jesus and his love for you and is willing to die for you. Do you, do you want happiness and satis satisfaction in this life and eternal in heaven? Do you want it enough to pay the price? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want your sins and guilt washed away? We are so distracted today, watching television, listen to music on our earphones, that we don't stop to think anymore. Technology has transformed the world. Did you, can you believe that? Technology has transformed the world. And technology is not yet finished. Changes is going on and on. Technology hasn't solved the problem of death. It hasn't solved the problem of evil. Look at the church burning. Look at the killings. Look at the murders, the homicides, the stealing. Look at how busy the police have to be just to keep us in order. And the world is still in army camp. People are the same as they have always been. We are still sinning. And out of our hearts come all these things that destroy the world. The young man lacked one thing. He lacks self-dignity. He has done everything right, but now he did the wrong thing. He walked away from Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus loved the young man even when he walked away. But he decided, no, I'm not going to go the Jesus way. I'm not going to let Jesus lead me home. I will find my own way, scripture said, that the young man was sad. He was grieved and he was sour. There are many of you who have walked away from Jesus Christ. This rich young ruler was not willing to put Jesus first in his life. If Jesus Christ is not Lord of everything in your life, he is not Lord at all. You have turned over your entire life to him and say, Lord Jesus, come and, come and take over. You ask, well, what will I have to do? If Jesus Christ is not Lord of everything in your life, he's not Lord at all in your life. First, you need to be willing to repent of your sins. What is repentance? Repentance means to change. Change your mind. Change your direction of your life. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to turn over the controls of your life to Christ and let him be Lord of your life? Then you need to receive Jesus Christ by faith. You need to be willing to commit your entire life to him. I'm asking you to say, I want a new life. I want Jesus to come into my life and help me with my problem and help me with the, ch the challenges I face and forgive my sins and give me the assurance that when I die, I will go to heaven. I'm giving you the insurance today as you watch the TV this afternoon that Jesus Christ is the true and living God. He is the only one that forgives sin. He is the only one that can help you. Can't nobody help you. It's, it's time out for the click. God doesn't like clicks because after a while you're going to click off. It is time to look around you and know that this is real, my sisters and brothers. People are dying without knowing God. I'm so glad that the calling on my life is to go out and win souls for Jesus Christ. That's all I'm interested in. I'm not interested in trying to show off or trying to be this or trying to be that because there is work to be done out here. There's many Christians today that stay home and don't go outside the door and ask the neighbor, do they want to come to church with me on Sunday? It's a shame before God because that is all Christians calling. 
how could you stay home and don't knock on the next door and say, would you love to come to church with me this Sunday? If you're not talking about God to anybody and not trying to win those souls, no wonder you have an attitude problem. No wonder things is not working right in your life. No wonder nobody wants to talk to you. It's not because you're so holy, it's because you're drying up. Witnessing and going out and telling somebody about God, that is your strength. Amen. It's just, it's your strength. I'm asking my brothers and sisters today to come on back home to God on changing hand because there's no other way. You see that there's people that are, are leaving home and they're not coming back home and you got to read where this one has been missing and, and nobody could find this one here and, 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 and things are starting to happen. But these things are not strange. They're in Revelation. God said in the last days that these things will occur and these things will happen. But you look up because your Redeemer is near. I'm telling you today that there's a way, and there's a way out of no way. Years ago, seven years ago, when I was out in the world, thought I was cool, and hanging up and down these avenues, and called myself getting high, and I was so cool. And one day, I was down in the pit, when no one wanted to talk to you no more, when your money ran out, when you got no place to stay, when people are so glad that you're, you're falling all out and there's no other way. But see, if it had not been for Jesus Christ, that who was on my side, I would know where I'd be at today. I thank God for God because I had no idea that the Lord was going to use me like he uses me today. And I'm so glad that God is using me because the devil didn't. But now I'm with Jesus Christ. I'm, I give my whole life to Jesus Christ. And when I see you in the streets out in New Haven, I see you, my heart hurts because you put me in a place where I used to be. I said, Lord, use me to win them souls. There's nobody out there trying to win those souls, but the preachers that do come out to try to talk to you, don't push them away, don't push them aside. They're only doing what God is asking them to do. They're not trying to be smart or be funny. They're trying to get to heaven. See, what we preach go for ourselves. We're not out here saying something that we don't have to live by ourselves. This thing is real, and God loves you, and you've already been brought with a price. You're not your own anymore. You know, you wake up every morning, things is not happening right for you. The devil is cheating you out of your blessings. He's telling you you're nothing. You're never going to be anything. You're never going to mount up to anything, but the devil's a liar. See, saints, we need to get in a good fight today. Not fighting with people, but fighting with the devil. There's people that you don't pray for. These people need prayer. We need prayer. I need prayer. Everybody needs prayer. We need to pray for one another. I need for you all to pray for this TV station down here because God is going to do some great things down here. And I'm asking you for all your prayers. And I'm asking all of you that knew God and left, come on back to God. I'm going to St. John's 10th chapter. I thank God for the reading of his word because... That's what it's going to take, saints. It's going to take the reading of God's word, and it has to be on your heart. Oh, glory be to God. God, I'm so glad that many are watching today. And I thank God for that. St. John's 10th chapter. I'm going from the first verse all the way to to the 17, to the 18 verse. Thank you, praise God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the shepherd's fold, but climb up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the portal opens, and the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Many times God has called you, but you didn't hear him. But God is knocking at your heart today because my brothers and my sisters, it is time out for your pants hanging off you. It's time out for wearing your clothes like you just don't care. And it's time out for parents letting their kids just come out. How do you call yourself being a, a child of God, a, a God serving or a Christian of God? And you just let your kids just, just take over your house. You just let your kids wear what they want to wear. You let them hang out all types of night and like you don't care. You, you, God needs you the head of your house. you got to be the head of your house. If you are in Christ, the devil is not that powerful over your kids. 
you got to anoint your kids and pray for your kids and keep your kids into the word of God. See, God knows you and he knows you by your name. How you know if God didn't call you? What are you doing? Why are you so busy that you cannot hear the cry of God? He's knocking at your door. He's saying, I'm the good shepherd. To him the porter opens and the sheep hears his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he pulls forth his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spoke Jesus unto them, but they understood not. What things they were which he spoke unto them? Then Jesus said unto them again, This is Jesus with his arms open wide. And he's asking you to come. You belong to God. He's asking you to come today. Ready at your homes, you can receive Christ. Through this television, you can receive you can receive Christ. This is why all this is here, so you can get it for those that are at home. We ask you that you reach out your hands right now and hold it up there, because Jesus is talking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. See, it's God. It's nobody else. It's God. And soon later you're going to see him for who he really is. It's a very, very, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find posture. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the devil. He doesn't like you. God wants you to get a good whiff of this message today because nothing belongs to you. You don't belong to yourself. The air you breathe came from God. It's God's breath that you are breathing with. That's why you wake up every morning. You don't wake up every morning because you're pretty. You don't wake up every morning because you felt like getting up. It's God, it's God asking you to maybe this is the day that you're going to come. This is the day that you have to come because time is running out. The thief comes for not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But he that is a herald and not the, the, sheep, the shepherd who owns the sheep or not. See the wolf come in and leave the sheep and flee, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The herald flee because he is a herald and cares not for his sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and my sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. As the Father knew me, even so I know. I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold or one shepherd. It is time to come back to Jesus Christ. It is time to stop kidding yourself. It is time to stop hiding behind the doors and the windows. It's not in alcohol. It's not in cigarettes. It's not in cocaine. It's not in drugs. It's not in talking back to your parents. It is not trying to be cute when you know that you should obey people that's older than you are. It's not in your silliness because all you're doing is, is walking a road of destruction. Sooner or later, you're gonna disappear off the face of this earth. If you think I'm kidding, read your newspaper. The newspaper is full every day. I pray every day, Lord, keep me saved. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm not perfect, but I ain't where I used to be. And I'm out to win souls, and your souls mean a lot to me and God today. I'm asking you, the those that are at home, I'm asking you that you stretch forth your hands, and all you have to do is really mean this prayer from your heart. Just mean this prayer from your heart. And you can accept Christ right where you're at, because this, is what, this was not by no accident. 
This is the move of God. See, God knows how to get you. You won't come out, so he puts it on the TV because you're looking at TV all day. I thank God you ain't watching HBO or BET because you would have missed this. But God is calling you. I'm asking all you that only one can see you is God. So if you got your hand waving up in the air, wave it and wave it for real. And repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I have sinned. I know what I've done wasn't right, oh God. My life is miserable without you. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I don't have a job. I don't have any place to stay. I'm sick. I ache my body. I don't know what's going to happen to me, where I'm going, or who's going to give me, or, or what's going on. I'm scared. I'm frightened. But God, I repent. In Jesus' name, I ask for forgiveness. In Jesus' name, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And I believe that he died for my sins, that I may live forever with you, O God. I'm asking you to right now to please accept me as your child. Accept me and wash me and make me whole and make me new again. In Jesus' name. And if you said that from your heart and meant it, you are saved. You are saved right now. And I thank God for you because right about now, God is changing you the way you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be who you were. You're supposed to be precious in the, in the eyesight of God. Now you're really somebody. Go and sin no more. Find a church tomorrow. It's okay. And go in and praise God. And praise Him. Because you are one that the devil did not get his hands on. You are somebody that he used to have, but he doesn't have you no more. You are saved if you did what I asked you to do. And I'm asking those that, all the backsliders, yes, I'm coming to get you backsliders too, because you know what? God is saying, come. You belong to me. You've been brought by my son's blood. Don't let my son's blood flow like it doesn't mean anything to you. It's time out for them bars. There's no happiness in bars. There's no happiness in hanging with the wrong folks. You're destroying yourself. St. John's 15th chapter, 17th verse, all the way down says, this world is not your home. The world doesn't love you. Jesus said that the world hated him first. So if the world hated him first, you know that the world hates you. But when you come back to God, you might be in the world, but you're not of the world. You don't do what the world do. Say goodbye to them things that never meant you any good. Say goodbye to them things that is giving you a road of destruction. Say goodbye to them things when the doctor said, we have done all we could for you. It's time to come back home. I'm asking all you that backslide to say this prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm so sorry, Lord, that I turned and walked away from you. But I'm asking you, please, oh God. I'm crying out for you because I know when I once was with you, it was never like this. But I've been too shame. I've been too shame. I've been too shame to come, oh God. I've been wallowing in my mess, oh God. Never know that you would take me back. I'm asking you right now, God. I'm believing in you to receive me as you once have. I believe you still are God and I know how it was when I was with you I had joy. I could sing, I could shout, I could laugh. I'm asking you to return your Holy Spirit into my life God and I will obey you Lord. I don't see what the world has to offer and it doesn't have nothing to offer me because without you I found out that I didn't have nothing. I woke up empty inside like something was missing, but you're missing, God. But today, I ask in Jesus' name, oh God, to let me come back home, just like the prodigal son has came back home, and you have accepted him. And if you have said that prayer, you are now back with the Father, asking you to continue to walk with God, talk with God, bring somebody to church, read your scriptures because they're food for you. 
I'm asking you because Jesus is soon to come. He's coming and his reward is with him. I'm so glad for you today and I'm so glad for Pastor Coleman who invited me down and they took good care of me down here at the station and all the directors and everything. I'm asking you to pray for them and ask God to truly bless them because they are, this is the ministry of God and for everyone that's in it. I'm asking you that if you don't have a church home, it's okay to go to church. You got to go to church because you fellowship with other sisters and brothers that someday that you're going to see in heaven. If you don't get to know folks and go to church, you're only cheating yourself. These people were once like you. I was once like you. Drugs, alcoholic. It wasn't cool. I lost a lot of friends. God saved me. I said, Lord, I don't know why you saved me. He said, because that's not the way I had for you. That's not your walk. God gave me a second chance. I never thought today that I would be here on TV asking you to come on God's side like I am. See, I know how it is when you don't have anything. I know when nobody wants you because you're nothing. I know how it is when you thought you was cool and you used to be cool. If you want to really be cool, get cool with God. You're cool when you're with God because he's the boss. He have never lost a case. He's a lawyer in the lawyer room. He's a doctor in the sick room. I'm asking you today, if you live right, heaven belongs to you. If you walk right, heaven belongs to you. If you talk right, heaven belongs to you. There's nothing that can keep you out of the hands of God. My sisters and my brothers, I thank you today because you made a great move. And you did it in the eyesight of God. That was the only thing that you have done in your life that ever meant anything or made any sense was to come back to your Heavenly Father. I'm praying for those that are find it very hard. Stop fighting and let God. Let it go and let God. Because you can't handle it. God is the one. Jesus is the one that forgives sins. No, no other way. There's no other name. And that name, Jesus Christ, that's the name. All devils and demons tremble and shake and fear because they know that name alone will shake the, fo the foundations of the earth. We're here because we were supposed to praise God. We're not supposed to praise man and what they're doing. They're dying. They're dead. If you don't know Christ, you're dead. You're walking dead. Did somebody ask me, well, the world's supposed to end in year 2000. Who told you that? No one knows when God's coming back. They said after the gospel has been preached all through the world. The gospel ain't been preached. If the gospel was preached, I wouldn't be up here. they probably preaching their own gospel. But there's a gospel that says, go to the highways and the byways. Go and get my people. We have a job to do. It's God's calling for us as saints of God, ministers of God, children of God, to go and get somebody that don't know God. That's our calling. It's not for us to sit home and point fingers and judge. You spend more time pointing fingers and talking about folks than getting out here and helping that girl that got her dress so high almost on her neck that you can't go in your pocket and say, sweetheart, I think you're a nice kid. I don't mean no harm. Will it be okay if I can just take you to the store one day with me? Because you look so lovely in a dress I saw. So you run around here talking about somebody and you know $20 was extra for you. God gave you extra for someone else. But you always want to be blessed, but you don't want to bless nobody else. Kids need to be loved. Don't tell that little boy, I see the hole in your shoe. Buy me a pair of shoes. You bought everything else. One of the greatest blessings you can be and could give is to give somebody something that means something to them. People have gave you because of God. God has asked a lot of you to give and to help people that you walk by every day. 
people be dirty, hug them. You used to be dirty. I hug them all the time. Because you know why? Because God's looking at you. Since you don't got clean up, come on. People need to be loved. It ain't all this sticking together. All you got to do is give some love. Hug them. Tell them they somebody. Bring them to church. Tell them about the word of God. Because God is real. I just thank God that this afternoon that he has given me the pleasure of speaking down here. And I just thank God for it because a lot of preachers are still yet to come to win souls for God. I'm going to go to another scripture because I have just a little bit more time. I'm going to tell you that God says in his word that scripture for you. Okay. It says I'm going down to St. John's chapter 15 and I'm going to go to the, the 10th chapter it says if you keep my commandments you should abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you that your joy might be full this is my commandment that ye love one another as I love you this is what Jesus is telling us he's telling us that there is power in loving each other we have to love each other because we're all sisters and brothers never kick a man down when he's down he's supposed to help your brother when he's down this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friend you are my friends if you do whatever I command you henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knows not what his law does but I have called you friend for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you you are an ordained people little girl little boy, lady, man, you have been chosen by God. You have been chosen by God because you belong to God. You've been brought with a price. It's no longer you. It's Jesus Christ. It's time out for foolishness. It's time to let God know that you're for him and no matter what. World behind you, cross before you. Who's next to go? See, we're all going to die. But when? Tomorrow's not promised. Nothing is promised to you. But if you're a child of God, and you're in His hand, no man can pluck you out of His hand. God's been good to us. And you know God has been good to you. And you, and you too. God wants to do some things for you. Let Him do it for you. It's good that you repent it and it's good that you're saved because you know what? You are in the book of life. Your name today has been written in God's book of life. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior today, the angels wrote your name in the book of life. When you repented and came back to God, your name was put back in the book of life. Where your name is, there's a candlestick with a light. It's lit to know that you are all right with God. I'm asking you to continue your walk with him. Don't let nobody hinder you. If anything, tell them to do the same thing that you've done. Because you know what? It's not getting no brighter or lighter for no one that is out of the will of God. God cannot help you the way you want to be helped if you're not in his hand.
God wants you in His hand. His hand. He got the whole world in His hand. But we have to come. We have to come humbly to God. And when you come to God, that's the best move that any person could do in a world that cares nothing about us. Down to the 19th verse. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. You can't belong to this world because ain't nothing you're doing is right. There's nothing you're doing is right. This world is messed up. It's out of control. You don't want to stay here forever. One guy told me, he said, might as well stay here because this is hell. I said, well, where could you get a Coke soda if you in hell? You can't buy a Coke soda, not down there. So this is not hell, but hell is real, my brothers and my sisters. But if he was of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sin, they will keep yours also. But all these things, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Because they know not him that sent me. They don't know him. Go down to the quick I go down to the twenty seventh chapter and say, and ye also shall bear witness because you because you have been with me from the beginning. Isn't it good to know that God has already chosen you and God has already made something out of you? See these are things that you should know. You don't have to walk around the city of New Haven with your head down. You can hold your head up because you are somebody. You've been somebody before the foundation of the world. But you got to come into the reality of who you are, and that's when you are in Jesus Christ. It is the only way, my brothers and my sisters. Believe me, it's the only way. But I feel good today because I know that uh, many of you have came back home. I'm so glad the angels are rejoicing. I'm so glad that you have made up your mind to come back to God. I'm so glad that you that are in Christ stay there. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing out here left but wolves and sheep clothing. And they're snatching folks. People are getting lost. People are getting mugged. But we care today. I care today. Pastor Coleman cares. All the preachers cares. God cares. But we need more preachers to come on the outside where we are and talk to these folks and do something for these folks. These are people that's not coming inside the churches. You got to come out to church and go out there and get them like God said. That's why I feel sorry for most churches. I told a guy the other day, I said, you know what, you ride around New Haven, you see so many houses boarded up. God is going to stop boarding up some of these churches because they're not doing anything for him. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how was my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know. Someone. 
Did you say you had satisfied? 